Well, sir, it's late afternoon now as we enter the small house halfway up in the next block, and here in the living room we find all our friends assembled. Vic and Sade are standing beside the library table discussing a matter which is apparently sharply controversial. Young Rush lounges in the Davenport listening with interest. And at the moment, the master of the menage is saying... Holy smoke, Sade, the thing is ridiculous. Well, I don't see why you say that. You'll save all that train fare, you'll ride to Chicago free, and you'll have oceans of fun. Where does that dog on fun come in? Why, if I've heard you once, I've heard you a thousand times remark to Mr. Donahue you're just dying to ride in the cab of a locomotive. Surely, but I'm going to Chicago on business. Mr. Buller is meeting me at the station, and so is Ralph K. Queech, a big shot kitchener executive from New York. How will I look climbing down off the tender, black, dirty, and worn out? They'll think I stole a ride. Well, Mr. Donahue... And on top of that, I'd have to stand up all the way. There's only two seats in a locomotive. One for the fireman and one for the engineer. Chicago's 140 miles away. Think I want to stand on my feet for 140 miles? Well, I'd be a wreck. Well, Mr. Donahue... And on top of that, it's against the rules for Donahue to let me ride in a locomotive. He's sticking his neck out. Why, great guns, he's liable to lose his job. No, I don't think so. He's taken all kinds of precautions. How did you get me in for this nonsense to begin with? Now, listen, Dick. Don't you jump down my collar. Suddenly. I wish it was me going to Chicago in the engine. So do I. They say the doggone engine dances around on the railroad tracks like a whirling dervish. You bounce up and down and teeter sideways and have to grab onto something to keep from falling out. Kiddo, am I really stuck for this? Yes, I guess you are. I told Mr. Donahue you'd follow directions and be at the water tower outside of town. Lands, I thought you'd kick your heels with joy. You've talked so much about wanting to ride in the locomotive cab. I've wanted to ride an engine ever since I was a boy. It's one of my life's ambitions. But I've heard you make that spiel 1,900 squillion times. Mm, probably have. Sure. But say that business trip to Chicago is something else again. I'd like to take a ride on a locomotive, sure. But I don't want to travel 140 miles. And I don't want to stand on my feet five hours. Mr. Buller and Mr. Weech will be at the Union Depot to meet me. What in study they going to think when I crawl off the tender digging cinders out of my eye? They think I'm crazy. <laughs> They'll probably think you're trying to beat your expense account. <laughs> sure. Well, I don't see how it's my fault. I thought I was doing something that would please the daylights out of you. How'd this all come about? Well, you telephoned you just received a message asking you to go to Chicago this evening. Uh, uh. After I hung up the receiver, I looked out the window and saw the mailman. And went out on the porch to see if he'd left anything. Uh, uh. Mr. Don, who was just leaving for the roundhouse. We chatted a little bit, and I happened to mention your Chicago plans. Uh, uh. His face lit up like an electric light. Hey, he says, this dovetail's fine. Vic's been hounding me for years to give him a ride in the engine. I don't see why I can't come through and make good. Tell him to be at the water tower at the north end of the yards at 20 minutes past five. What's the idea of that? Train starts for water and you'll have a chance to climb in the locomotive. Well, where can I catch the half-wit train at the station? Or the roundhouse? Against the rules. Yeah. You mean I got a sneak on? Well, it amounts to that, I guess. See, Gov, the railroad's got several detectives hanging around watching, and if they locate any hobos attempting to hook a free ride, they can I'm not going to involve myself in any such a crazy business, say. Well, Mr. Donahue says there's absolutely no risk. He's got considerable authority nowadays, you know. He's traveling inspector of locomotives. Where is this water tower place? I don't know. Thought you did. I'm the slightest idea. I know where it is. Where? Extreme north end of the yards. You know where Harry Hunter's farm is, don't you? Uh-huh. Well, the water tower is half a mile north of Harry Hunter's farm. Well, how in thunder would I get there? Take the Park Street streetcar to the end of the line. Well, it'd still be three miles from Harry Hunter's farm. Near four. I'd have to walk? <laughs> I guess you would. No, sir, by George. Well, don't glare at me. I thought Look, I was... Look, I'd have to carry my suitcase almost five miles up the railroad track. Then I'd have to sneak into the half-wit locomotive like a hobo. Why, some detective might shoot me. Well, I doubt if Mr. Don would expose you to any such dangers. He assured me... I'd have me... to stand on my feet in a rocking, swaying, bouncing engine for five hours while I traveled 140 miles. 
I get black as a cannibal from smoke and dirt and soot and dust. Finally, I'd arrived at the Chicago Union Station and climb off a pile of coal, digging cinders out of my eyes and ears, and cordially greet the two big-shot Kitchener executives, who would no doubt hire me on the spot. Well, if you don't care to take advantage... No, sir, by George. I certainly love to have the opportunity. No, sir, by George. Look at the lovely money you'd save. What lovely money? Well, don't railroad tickets to Chicago run pretty close to $7? We're not so rich we can sneeze at $7. I wouldn't be saving seven dollars. You would, too. Mr. Don, who's not going to charge you a penny? No, Sid. I'm on an expense account. The company pays for the transportation. Well, sure, but you'd be in time. No, kiddo. The whole thing's out of the question. Well, you're the party to decide. I know one thing, though. Mr. Don, who's going to be good and offended. Why? Why, simply because you've been hounding him year after year after year to give you a ride in his engine cab. And when he finally fixes it up, you back down. I've certainly got plenty of reasons for backing down, haven't I? No, I'd enjoy a spin in his engine cab. I'd love that. Say, a trip down to Funk's Grove or someplace. But holy smoke, I don't want to travel across the doggone continent. His face lit up like an electric light. He was pleased as could be. Tell the old boy to be at the water tower at 20 minutes past five, he says. I'll give him the time of his life. I'll give him a scoop and let him shovel a few tons of coal. Now, wouldn't that be fine? Remember, I'm going to have on my best clothes. Well, I'm not urging you to go. Forget it. Only thing is, I know Mr. Donahue will be good Telephone to Telephone ringing. Answered. Probably Milton Wells. He's got some trivial matter of importance to discuss. I'd be dead by the time we got to Juliet. Mm. Oh? Yes. Yes, I believe she is. Just one second. Mom. Fred Stambaum? I'm pretty sure it's Mr. Donahue. Mr. Donahue? Yeah. You talk to him, Vic. You talk to him. Shall I tell him you're backing down? Tell him anything you want. Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Donahue. Oh, are you? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, um, Vic has been thinking it over and he feels. What? Tell him the train. Uh huh. Well, uh... Ha-ha. Uh, uh, no danger, huh? Well, uh... All right. All right, I'll I'll tell him. Uh, all right, Mr. Donahue. Goodbye. Oh, Rick, he's so happy and enthusiastic, he's dancing the jig. Says he's going to give you a real treat. Even if I could have got a word in edgewise, I doubt if I'd had the heart to tell him you're backing down. Where is he telephoning from? Roundhouse. What do you want? Well, the uh, train's not going to stop for water at the water tower. Well? But it is going to slacken speed. Slacken speed? Did Donahue propose that I flip on a moving locomotive? It's going to slow way down. He, He said you wouldn't have the least bit of trouble hopping aboard. He suggested you toss him your suitcase while you're running down the railroad tracks, and if it looks like you're going to slip and fall, a fireman or somebody would be ready to grab you by the My arms. heavens sake. Well, not a speck of Would danger, you actually let your husband undertake such a wild... Cell phone's ringing. That's Milton Wells. Answered. I'm in a cold perspiration just thinking to myself running down that railroad track, throwing my suitcase on a moving train. Hello? Yes? Yes, I believe she is. Miss Donahue. Miss Donahue, this trip, huh? Yeah. All right. Mm. Uh, hello there. Uh, lunch? Uh, why, uh, I guess he won't require any lunch, Miss Donahue. No, he decided he'd better ride in the chair car. Yes, he's sorry to miss out on the lovely locomotive, but he feels... Yes... Yes. All right, Miss Donahue. All right. Goodbye. What'd she want? Offered to put you up a lunch for your engine trip. Hmm. You would throw your lunch to the engineer while you're running along the railroad tracks, Kyle. Throw your lunch to the engineer, your suitcase to the fireman, and then make a desperate leap, hoping and praying your feet don't slip on the slippery steps and... Don't side saddle. I'm dizzy as it is. 
It'll be a long, cold day before Mr. Donahue offers to do you another favor, I'll bet. Uh, He'll be good and offended by this. Paper will hit old stone, Bruce. Yeah. Will you bring Papa a glass of cold water? Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. 